we are going to be going over the non-inverting summing amplifier. To see how this circuit works, we're going to get right into the analysis. So let's begin with labeling our component currents. I'm going to label this one I1, let's label this one I2, and we'll label this I3. It's important to keep in mind that though no current goes into the positive or negative input of my op amp, there's definitely a current at the output of my op amp. So now that I've labeled my component currents, I can move on to labeling my node voltages. V1, V2, and VO already have a label, but I still need to label this node here, and let's call this VA. And because we're treating this as an ideal op amp, I'm going to call this VA as well. So now that every component has a current, and every node has a voltage, we can move on to writing KCL. And let's write the KCL right here. And this tells us that I1 is entering that node, and so is I2, and we don't have anything leaving that node because no current's going into our op amp, so that's going to be equal to zero. This tells us that I1 is equal to negative I2, and that's the only KCL that we have to write for the circuit. Now we can move on to writing the equations for our components. In this circuit, I have four resistors, so I'm going to have to write four Ohm's law equations, and we can begin with R1. We'll have that I1 is equal to V1 minus VA divided by R1. Now for R2, we have I2 is equal to V2 minus VA divided by R2. Now for R3, we have I3 is equal to VA minus zero divided by R3. Lastly, we have to write the equation for R4, and that's going to be I3 is equal to VO minus VA divided by R4. So at this point, we have all the equations that describe the functionality of the circuit. So what I want to do now is to find the output voltage VO in terms of my input voltages V1 and V2, as well as those constant resistor values. So to do that, I'm going to use this KCL relationship to relate my I1 and I2 Ohm's law equations and then I can equate my I3 equations together, so that way I can get rid of my currents. Starting with I1 and I2, I'll have V1 minus VA divided by R1 is equal to VA minus V2 divided by R2. Now equating my I3s together, I have VA divided by R3 is equal to VO minus VA divided by R4. So now let's take this equation and solve for VA. Let's start off with getting rid of these denominators and multiply everything by R3 and R4. This gives us VA R4 is equal to VO R3 minus VA R3. So now we can move the VA to the other side and then factor it out. We'll have VA R4 plus R3 is equal to VO multiplied by R3. So this gives us that VA is equal to VO times R3 divided by R4 plus R3. And this should not be surprising, because really, if you look at these two series resistors here, it's essentially a voltage divider, and this is the equation for a voltage divider. So now let's take this value of VA and plug it in over here. But before I plug in my VA definition, I'm going to get rid of these fractions over here, so that way it's a little bit cleaner. So here I'm going to have R2V1 minus R2VA is equal to R1VA minus R1V2. So now I'm going to move the VAs to one side and factor it out. We'll have R2 V1 plus R1 V2 is equal to R2 plus R1 VA. So now let's take that definition of VA that we found and plug it in. So now we can say that R2 V1 plus R1 V2 is equal to R2 plus R1 multiplied by R3 VO divided by R4 plus R3. Now we can do something interesting. If we set R1 to be equal to R2, R3, and R4, a lot of things start canceling. This would cancel with this, and we could factor out both of these resistors, and that would enable us to cancel R2, R1, and R3. And this would leave us with a final answer that VO would be equal to V1 plus V2. And that is the non-inverting summing amplifier.